Hello everyone, this is producer Diane coming to you. They finally gave me a mic, but only for one real reason, which is to tell you about our sponsor, Ana Luisa. That's spelled A-N-A space L-U-I-S-A. Ana Luisa is a, a jewelry company that designs pieces with a more beautiful story from beginning to end, starting with recycled materials whenever possible, transparent business practices always, and small batches that are kind to the earth. They're carbon neutral. They have a 365 day warranty on their pieces. Pieces. And not only that, they make limited batches of their pieces, which ensures the highest production standards while eliminating excessive waste. And getting into jewelry in general, I feel like I always have like the one ring that I really like wearing for like years until genuinely it breaks or I lose it. I rarely find pieces that I really like. So when I do find it, it means a lot and I just use, wear them over and over. And in order to wear them over and over, the design has to be very simple, you know, kind of everyday, has a last a long time and thankfully that kind of basically sums up Ana Luisa jewelry once again Ana Luisa is A-N-A -A space L-U-I-S-A if you want to look them up and not only that I'm really grateful that they have jewelry that start as low as 39 bucks and not only that you get to add your 10% discount from um, our code on top of that purchase so it's even cheaper than 39 if you go with a piece of jewelry that is 39 and new jewelry collections are released every Friday. Well, to sum it all up, check out analuisa.com slash real. Go treat yourself and your loved ones and use our code real to get 10% off. I absolutely recommend them. They're a great brand uh, making beautiful, sustainable jewelry. So go check them out. analuisa.com slash real code real. No, I'm for real. Do it. <laughs> What's up, Get Real listeners? It's producer Diane, and I wanted to say to listen and subscribe to season two of Asian Enough, an LA Times podcast having the conversations we need when we need them the most. Join returning hosts Jen Yamato and fellow Times reporters Johanna Buya, Tracy Brown, and Suhana Hussein as they explore the Asian American experience. Now, on Asian Enough, you'll get to hear interviews with a range of voices, including actors Sandra Oh and Lucy Liu, Nalas Minjin Lee, Drag performer Juju B and you know I hopped on that episode as soon as it was released this past Tuesday um it yeah I was really excited and I listened to it right away on my drive actually from uh San Francisco to LA and thank goodness for that I love the company um but yeah so each per guest will share the joys the complications and everything else that comes along with being Asian American I have been watching Drag Race since I want to say college, like 23rd, no, 2014. So it was crazy to hear so much of her background and, you know, her family's, uh, I guess, like journey together as being immigrants from Laos. And I feel like that's a really underrepresented part of Asia in general, especially in like Western media, because you see mostly like East Asians, like Korean, Japanese, Chinese. So it was great to hear someone from that perspective, being Laotian American specifically. So yeah, season two of Asian Enough explores topics like the pandemic's impact on the community, the need for allyship, the ongoing fight for inclusion in media and so much more asian enough season two is now available to stream on latimes.com or listen and subscribe on apple spotify or wherever you get podcasts you're listening to one right now so surely you, you've got this down congratulations you're much smarter than me okay now back to the show Hello, everyone. Once again, you are tuned into one of the best podcasts in the world. This is called Get Real, hosted by us, BM. Ashley. And we're not joined here by Peniel today. But this is a show where we get honest about the ups and downs of young adulthood, but from our perspective. And today, we have a extremely talented guest on our show. Mm -hmm. Please welcome Katie. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Thank you. Yeah, go ahead and introduce yourself, Katie. Um, hi, my name is Katie. I'm a singer. Yeah, I just came here today meeting you guys and 
trying to have a talk about stuff. So I'm excited. <laughs> Yo, if you guys don't know about Katie, she's killing it. Amazing solo artist. If you haven't tuned into her music yet, tuned in now because she got some crazy hits. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. You be proud of it, girl. Take it. Hey. <laughs> All right, guys. In today's episode, we're talking about branding. This is something that's prevalent in all our lives, but especially as entertainers. Sometimes the industry or even fans want the artist to have a certain image, which may or may not clash with how the artist wants to present themselves. What are certain decisions we've made for our brand and what was put on us that we embraced? Interact with us on our socials at The Dive Studios or leave us a comment on our full episodes at youtube.com slash divepods. Also follow the podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Leave a review on Apple Podcasts so more people can know about our show and join in on the fun. Hi, Solo Katie. artist, <laughs> killing it in the game. Thank you. You're, wow. you're welcome. Wow. <laughs> I've been a fan for so long thank and you. finally wow. seeing her in person. Oh my, thank wow. you. So, Can I take the jacket yes, off? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Wherever it's you like, like. no, you can't. <laughs> hey, you guys are matching. Oh, shoot. Okay. Oh, hey. <laughs> nice. White tea. Fresh white tea. Never go wrong with the white tea. Well, Katie, she moved to New Jersey at the age of 10. Mm -hmm. right? Wow, you know your facts. Thank you. <laughs> um, how was it growing? How, wait, so how long did you live in New Jersey? Um, Until I came to Korea for the audition show, I was there for my whole the whole time. Oh, mm. so you came for K-pop star? Yeah. Wow. Never visited before. And yeah. And then afterwards, I stayed here. And then I was in America until like two months ago for mm -hmm. about two years. And then I came back here. America where? LA or New York? LA for a year and then Jersey for a year. Oh, I see. I see. Mm -hmm. I saw the clip of you singing in the New York subways too. Oh, oh. I Oh, we took it down because I hated it. Why? <laughs> But thank you for watching. Why? It was so good. <laughs> yeah, you did I not was, like it? <laughs> no. I saw that one oh, too. Man. That was good. Oh, that was so you. good. Oh. If you guys didn't know, JYP himself called her the next Asian soul. Yeah. Mm. That was big. When you were on the show? Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. You guys know so much. Thank yeah. you. We studied. We studied. Oh, wow. <laughs> and we're fans. Oh, yeah. I, I have a personal question. Mm. So for Remember Music Video, right? Mm. You know how you had all those rappers on stage? Mm. All those rappers were very talented and had a name brand for themselves, right? Of course, yeah. How'd you get all of those rappers in one video? Oh, I didn't know any of them. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I wasn't really into like K-pop or anything. Yeah. But the music director knew everybody. So wow. So we oh, got wow. everybody together, which was great wow. for me. Yeah, I got to meet a lot of new people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I saw that, I was just like, how much money did they spend on this? <laughs> <Seriously>? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. That was nice. Yeah, amazing artist, killing the game. Um, One of the best voices. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. So, wow. are you gonna stay in Korea for a while now, doing music here? Uh, I think so, maybe for a few years. I'm not really sure, but yeah. Mm. Seeing how it goes, huh? Mm -hmm. How long have you been here? You said two years now, or did you go back for? She two came years back two months ago. Oh, two months. Mm -hmm. Dang. Mm -hmm. How was quarantine? Um, it was okay. I, I had to move in, so I just did a lot of organizing stuff. Mm. Oh, so you have a place now, like where you live now? Mm. Oh, I see, I see. Mm. Are there any other artists in your label? Nope. It's just Only you? One, yeah. Wow, lucky. I good. wish I had some friends though, like artist friends, but I got oh. nobody. But <laughs> We can be your friends. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> did you know he came out in K-pop Star too? Oh, what? Matthew? what? Yeah. yeah. That's Which one? That's also one that I kind of don't want to remember. <laughs> oh, oh, I, see, yeah. <laughs> I was on season one. Oh, yeah. that's a while back. I came out on one episode. Mm. Really? Yeah. I, didn't I auditioned feel like it. four times. Mm -hmm. I came out on one episode. Because oh. the first three times that I came out, no matter how much they tried to edit it to make me look good, <laughs> they just couldn't do it. Oh, man. Yeah, so I was just like, thank you. Oh man, I'm yeah. sorry. It's okay. Mm -hmm. I couldn't speak Korean. I couldn't remember my Korean lyrics. So oh, no. I was just like, yeah, I couldn't speak. I, I didn't know anything about Korea. Uh -huh. yeah. Did you speak Korean when you were on K-pop star to a certain degree? Yeah, yeah. See, I didn't have that. You were oh. one step ahead of me. <laughs> mm. 
I see. That's cool though. You speak Korean now? I speak kind of broken. I'm okay. How do, would you, what would you say my Korean is oh, like right now? Oh, it improved so much. Right? Yeah. Mm. It improved a lot. Yeah. Compared to when you first came. Yeah. I've been here for eight years now. So if I didn't improve, that's a problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> improved a lot. Mm. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us today. Almost dead. And we're going to talk about branding, which is kind of difficult to talk about, Will. But we'll try our best. Yeah. All right. Let's shout out our sponsor, BetterHelp One Time. BetterHelp is a platform where you can match and speak with a professional from the comfort of your home, all within 48 hours of registering. It's an alternative to in-person counseling. And if you think you may need help with the paying for their service, there's options for financial aid that you can find on their website. Maybe you're qualified. So the option to get a different counselor from the one you matched with for free if it turns out you don't really mesh well. And there is an extensive list of counselors that want to help, including those that specialize in different areas like stress or anger issues. You've heard us talk about feelings and our ups and downs on this podcast a lot. A lot of times, talking is the first step to get help and some sense of relief you may need. Therefore, I hope you guys can find that same kind of relief. Maybe better help can be that safe space for you. I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you get 10% off of your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash getreal10. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash get real 10. Okay, now back to the episode. Do you guys think about branding when you guys put out content or music or just like any type of content? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, I think, um, well, mostly for me, it's like social media and Mm. also YouTube Mm. that I'm currently doing. And I feel like it's very different for for both Instagram and YouTube. Mm. For YouTube, it's… I don't know if if I would call it branding, but it's kind of like I have an adulting series and I kind of show everyone what it's like to live alone for the first time and to be independent. So I guess um, in the adulting series content, it's more like real i show more real sides to myself and my life yeah hey i'm not even gonna lie out of all the everyone doing youtube your youtube was the first one i watched like to the end really so the adulting series kind of was like oh snap like it resonated so did you watch the most recent one send me the link later (laughs) i'll watch it i'll watch it send me the link later and also instagram (laughs) is more about like visual i think because it's you know you see pretty pictures and when you look at the feed it's right. like you know so I guess I try to post out I have my own brand yeah aesthetic I yeah. do have that yeah, hashtag aesthetic that. Um, so I try to post aesthetically pleasing photos but it gets stressful because I will spend like hours trying to decide which photo to upload and then like mm. which photo looks good with my feed so sometimes mm. it's stressful mm. and it sounds so like superficial and like so but I can't help it (laughs) because I guess it's a part of my brand you know like I have to keep that up 100% yeah when I do the Instagram thing I'm very back and forth I feel like I try to color code everything at times Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden I'll be like why am I doing this Mm. I (laughs) I just don't want to care anymore you know so I start like you know I'm just like whatever like this is what I feel today Mm mm-hmm And then I'll look at my Instagram like a week later while I'm scrolling down. Just like, dang, why did I put all this (laughs) (laughs) up? Archive, 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 archive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I got a comment once from a fan like, dude, what's wrong with you? Like the number of how many posts you have go up and down like on a (laughs) month. Like it stays the same but it goes up and down. I know. Can't help it. Once you post it, you get like second thoughts and you're like, should I just delete this? This doesn't look very good. Oh, I don't know. And you just like end up archiving it. Um, but are you active on social media? Um, I am, but um, I think for my Instagram, I don't really run YouTube mm. or my own Instagram actually. I when I post stuff, uh-huh. like it's, I don't get to like kind of decide what I get to post. But oh, no. I do the stories on my own. But uh-huh. I feel like that that's exactly what they're doing with me like trying to brand me mm-hmm. into a cool person mm-hmm. which I'm not yeah. <laughs> so they're trying to make me seem cool and you know have cool clothes going to cool places but uh-huh. yeah 
Oh wow. When you look at it, do you like think like, oh damn, I look pretty cool? Um, nah. No? <laughs> nah. It's like, dang, like they're doing a good job. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. I I do feel like it's it's doing its job, branding. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's mostly like music related. No. What they post. Um we're trying to show more friendly uh-huh. your side of me. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But I think now that's like even harder because I'm so used to like trying to take a picture with a cool, cool smile oh. instead of like my real smile. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. They're trying to, they, I guess they wanted to portray you as this like mysterious musician. Mm-hmm. You only get to hear her voice and we don't know much about her life. Mm. Um, how would you, how would you differentiate what people perceive on social media as to who you feel like you really are? Um, I don't really mind how I'm seen on Instagram especially mm-hmm. because it's just one photo with a caption. Like right. it doesn't ex- explain too much about me. Mm-hmm. So I think the best way is just letting them have control because I'm so bad at those social media stuff. Mm-hmm. I just can't keep up. So I'm thankful that they're doing it. But I think people can see who I really am through music. So Mm -hmm. I try to kind of be real. Try to be real with music instead of like visual stuff. Because I'm not educated. or I don't know stuff about visual arts and stuff. So Mm. I just let the professionals take take care of it for Mm -hmm. me. So Mm -hmm. it works for me. Wow. Wow. Very humble. What a humble answer. Very nice. Killing it with the music. Thank you. Do you get to have full control over your music though? (laughs) <laughs> I'm trying to. That's uh-huh. why uh, I, I, I've been listening and doing what they're asking quite well. Mm. So like maybe later I could ask for what I want and they say yes. Mm. Mm. Do you have um, a certain type, maybe a certain genre that you want to dive into maybe in the future? Yes. Um, R&B all the way I think. Um, R&B and jazz is what I love. And, mm. But it's mm. not very… Major mm. in the scene. Mm. So yeah, I got to fight it. But I do want to do those very… Like as my main mm. genre. Oh my god. Her voice with jazz. That would sound so good. Like she'll oh, melt thank people. You. Uh-huh. Like, oh. Thank you. Wow. Oh man. <laughs> Hopefully you can brand yourself into that direction. Mm. <laughs> I'm just trying to lead way back into yeah, branding yeah, real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You have your big titty gang thing too, Matthew. Yeah. So I started… Um, uh, for people who don't know… I started a a whole brand. It started with a, a big meme. Um, someone asked me while I was doing a live. They were like, hey what… I like working out. I'm a huge fitness guy. So it's like they asked me like… What's your favorite part of your body to work out? And on live… Korean artists don't really say this too much. I was just like… Oh I like working out my titties. And then everyone just got… It just got huge. Mm -hmm. And then I just turned it into um, something that has more meaning. I made a brand. I made apparel. And then I… I can't think of the word. Donate. I donate to um, breast cancer awareness. (gasps) Yeah. That's so nice. Yeah. I don't know how it happened. But it did. And oh, wow. so that's that was like one of the biggest memes of 2019 and 2020. So I was really blessed for that. Mm. That branding kind of just happened on its own. Me just being stupid on people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> oh, your titties. <laughs> and then, but that's you. That's me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the real me. So, so the problem I have is like… When I see cool people on Instagram, I'll be like, dang, they're cool. Like, mm-hmm. They look dope. They're doing it so well. Um, I want to try that. So on Instagram, I kind of like try to put up like the dope stuff. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm on live, people are just like… Is it the same guy? Yeah, I'm (laughs) sorry. Who are you? (laughs) But don't you think that makes you more likable? I don't know. Like I know there are a lot of indie artists Mm. who um, just do music. And they don't want to do anything… Like may- that will make them look less like a cool musician. Like people, mm. they're worried that people might not take them seriously. Yeah. So I know a lot of people are against like TikTok challenges because once you get a song on like a TikTok and you yeah. make people do challenges, they kind of think that people take their music less seriously. Um, mm. And like with you too, when you look at your 
when we see your music video, when no. we see you doing music, you're like this really tough macho guy, you know, like spitting, <sighs> spitting, what do you call it? Spitting bars. <laughs> I don't even know what you call it. Oh my goodness, <laughs> Ashley, wait, 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 wait. Excuse yourself from the room right now. <laughs> right now, please. <laughs> you know, bars. you do that and people are like, oh my God, Matthew's so cool, so handsome, so talented. But then, you know, when we see the more real side of you, we see you talking to your fans, we see you on live, we see you on Get Real. And it's like you're like the boy next door, you know, our little brother. The boy and next door. <laughs> and I feel like that makes you more likable. But if there, I feel like there's always two sides. There is. Yeah. There is. I think that's relevant to both American artists and Korean artists. Yeah. Yeah. Fun fact. Most home remedies and over-the-counter acne products don't work. And even worse, they can really damage your skin. Um, I didn't actually have that bad of acne until I got into my 20s. So as an adult, that's called adult acne, right? Because I'm an adult with acne. Honestly, I kept picking at it. Yeah, I'll admit it. Like I was picking at my skin. That's probably like the worst thing you can do to it, probably. Um, and obviously picking skin does not ever work but you know what does work prescription treatments that's why we're excited to partner with apostrophe the sponsor of this episode apostrophe is a prescription skincare company that offers science-backed oral and topical medications that are clinically proven to help clear acne apostrophe connects you with a board certified dermatologist who will create a personalized treatment plan that is perfectly tailored to your unique skin so we're all unique babies <laughs> Simply fill out Apostrophe's online quiz about your skin goals and medical history. Then snap a few selfies and your dermatologist will create your customized treatment plan. Apostrophe treats acne and they can also help you hit your other skincare goals like reducing redness, wrinkles, and even dark spots. Okay, so like when it comes to skincare and like my goals for my own skin, I just want to keep it together. I just don't want to look or feel like I'm falling apart. So ultimately for my skin, I just want to be able to do far less every day and be confident and like comfortable in my literal skin. So we have a special deal for our audience. Save $15 off your first visit with a board certified dermatologist at apostrophe.com slash get real when you use our code get real. This code is only available to our listeners. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash get real and click begin visit. Then use our code get real at sign up and you'll get $15 off your dermatology visit. That's A-P-O-S-T-R-O-P-H-E dot com slash get real and use that code get real to get your dermatology visit and save $15. And we thank Apostrophe for sponsoring the podcast. Thank you. <laughs> but like these days, I do feel like the trend of like being mysterious is kind of past yeah mm. and more of like showing who you are and mm -hmm. showing your house and like how you if you live alone how you live mm. on your off days and mm -hmm. stuff so i think that's why a lot of celebrities also do youtube on the side mm -hmm. so that they could like show more than their you know art that they do mainly mm -hmm. so i think the trend is becoming more of like less mysterious more yeah. friendly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. more character huh yeah because definitely in like the late 90s and early 2000s all the celebrities were supposed to be like hidden and mysterious mm -hmm. yeah. and they weren't supposed to be someone that you can just meet or see yeah um so they try to keep it that way but i feel like these days um even like Crush, yes, he as a musician, he's mm. so respected, he's so talented, but he's also very funny. And I love very, Crush, man. You know, he, I love Crush. <laughs> he's sometimes very ditzy, and he shows that through his like I don't know Instagram yeah. videos, like little things he does, which I think is very cute and very likable as well. Mm. But then we also have Dean, who I personally think is very mysterious. Mm. I don't know, I don't really see much of him besides mm. through music, right? Um, but I mean, both are very respected and liked in the music industry right i guess it's just whatever you prefer right how you brand it huh it's like how you prefer to brand it hmm. <sighs> i go through trouble trying to brand it this way and then having it brand it completely <laughs> different way. it's like all right today i'm gonna be like the sexy mysterious guy all right i go on live i'm talking about titties everyone's just like ah they put up the meme i'm just like Damn, that's not what i wanted today mm. So maybe that whole thing becomes you and they take it as, oh wow, he's, a, he's kind of gullible but mm. still cute and uh, funny and very likable. I hope so. Mm. I hope that's how they take it at the end of the day and it's just not goofy. Because at the end of the day, I take what I take seriously, I do take seriously. Mm. 
And what I try to take seriously and cannot take seriously, I just continue to fail at that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, like you said, I hope they take it like that. Thank you. you. That makes me feel better about it. Do you ever worry about like, what if people don't take you too seriously? Mm, Sometimes, yeah. Mm. Because the titty thing, that was like a (laughs) big… Sorry. That was like the biggest one. Mm. I was afraid at one point, people would know me more as the titty guy Mm -hmm. than… BM from Card or mm. BM as a musician, BM as an artist, performing artist. So I was kind of worried, but I think they go hand in hand pretty well right now. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes when my first solo drops. Mm. I'm gonna look in the comments, and then if there's more talk about titties than there is about music, <laughs> I gotta change my branding no, a little bit. No, I'm sure they'll oh. talk more about your music once no. it's released. Mm. When is it released? It's supposed it was supposed to release this month, but it got pushed back to next month. So early June. Oh wow, congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Oh wow. Yeah. It's gonna be a very different me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Who do you think has a great brand then out of celebrities? Hmm. Who do you think has a great brand out of <laughs> celebrities? It's hard to say, huh? Mm. I want to say in Korea, I think G Dragon has mm. one of the best branding because I feel like that's what he wants to, and the persona he pushes mm. is the persona that he likes. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's a fashion icon too. So, I mean, Yomta, he like got really famous all of a sudden because the I flex. Mean, yeah, he was in the music industry flex. for a long time, but then he started. Um, making his own t-shirts. I don't know how it became like that, but <laughs> yeah. he started flexing and then he put the t-shirts <laughs> and then so he flexing. sold like so much yeah. t-shirts that he made I don't even know how much money from it. And yeah, then, he made uh, dumb money. And then he shot the he became the ambassador for the flex soju, like you know. So yeah. uh, I don't know. That was a huge how breakthrough did that for him. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. It was just like a God-given miracle, I think. <laughs> just, like, <laughs> like your titty just like my titty thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 He's got flex, I got titties. Mm-hmm. I think especially in idol groups, because each member has a position. Yeah. And uh, the company kind of tells you what position you are mm-hmm. and what position you should be. And I feel like in uh, K-pop groups, there's always the one in charge of the egg-yo, mm. the one who's char- in charge of like sexiness, the one that's in charge of, I don't know, like more boyish charms. Mm, so like girl um, crush. Mm-hmm. for me, uh, our group, we had, e- we each had a code because our group name was Ladies Code. Ooh. So our Magne Chunyi, she was pretty chic code. Pretty chic. <laughs> and because she was very pretty, but she was also very chic. She, she is. Has, she has, she the has eyes. these cat eyes. Yeah. Um, and even though she was Magne, she was very butukduke. Uh, she mm. was kind of very um, scary. No. Okay. <laughs> And then we had So Jung, She's who was the main vocalist, and yeah. she was funky code. Yeah. And then Lise was pure code because mm. she was so pure and she was like an angel. Mm. And then Umbi, who was lovely code because mm. she was in charge of the egg-yo and she was like the cutest one. And then there was me. I what was the you? global code. Global oh, code. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone had these like oh, wait. traits. She speaks English. Global. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She, I was global oh code and I was like, what the heck? Like everyone has these like pretty names. Like funky code, <laughs> pure code, um, you know, lovely <laughs> code. And then here I am, I'm global code. Did you um, ask them like, we? that's all you guys thought of? Or do you guys saw me? Like, Yeah, I mean, they were like, you have to, you know, speak English and you have to get all the global fans. So I was like, okay, I'm global code. <gasps> and then they would make me in charge of doing all the, you know… Hello everyone. We're Ash. Uh, we're Ladies Code, and we would have to do that in like English, Spanish, and Japanese, wow. um, and Korean. And that was kind of like our thing that we pushed for in the very beginning. Yeah. But I think thanks to that, we did have a lot of fans in like Latin America and stuff because there was no yeah. other K-pop group introducing themselves in Spanish. And you did. Yeah. Can you try it right now? No, I forgot everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It was it just, I just remember Hola, estamos ladies code. Hey, that's all you need. <laughs> that's all I remember. But um you guys have like different uh positions too, right? Well, we just have the rappers oh. and the vocalists. Well, and you're the king. 
Oh, snap. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so dumb Hello? today. What's wrong with me? Hello. She knows better. Than I know. You. Okay, so our group name is Card. Uh, duh. We have the Joker cards, the color Joker and the black Joker, the Ace card, and the King card. Sheesh, I haven't even said this in so long mm -hmm. since Jacef is in the military. My mm -hmm. member's in the military right now, so we haven't really talked about this, but oh my goodness. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. So what does the king do? Um, <laughs> it's kind of like Okji. Like it was a little bit Kiyomacho, <laughs> but I'm supposed to be like the the what do you call Kidung in, in English again? Like the pillar. Yeah. Like the uh -huh. pillar of the group where I just keep everyone together. Mm. Like the leader? Um, we Our group doesn't have a leader because mm. everyone is so like leader-like. Mm. If there was one leader, we would have… Mm, that leader would have… <laughs> <laughs> not, a, not have been a good time. So we're all very, uh, very forward and leader-like. So there was no leader. But mm. it felt good though. King. Like that's… Every guy wants to be king. Mm -hmm. What about you Katie? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just by myself, so I don't really have a position mm. to take. Mm. Because nobody really wants to be taken lightly. I didn't want to make a fool of myself doing mm. crazy things. But I just wanted to be me in the beginning with, without any labels on it. Like being sexy or cute or anything. I just wanted to show who I was. Mm. But that doesn't kind of work here, I think. Mm. Maybe for some people, but not for me. Mm -hmm. So we kind of went with like the cool vibe. Mm. And like, I'm still trying to get used to being cool. <laughs> used to looking I'm, I'm cool, just, maybe. I'm too cool for my coolness right now. Oh my goodness. I can't handle my cool. <laughs> no, not like that. But yeah, I I, I want to know like what trend, what trending and… What's cool, you know, but I, I don't really keep up with those stuff. I don't know how to, but I guess like when I present myself to the public, I have to. Mm. So that's kind of part of my job that I have to do. So I just take it as a job and maybe like music speaks more, I hope. Mm. It does. Mm -hmm. It does. I feel like you as an artist are almost like your own genre almost. Because you're very unique. Oh. And when you do come out, my members are big fans too. Because one of them, we were in YG. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you guys right. trained together. Jiu. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She talked a lot of good about Aww. you too. And every time you come out, it's like, hey, you check out Katie's new Aww, tight. Thank yeah. you guys. Yeah, yeah. Very wow. dope. Very uh, unique in itself, I would say. Wow, thank yeah. you. Yeah. I was listening to Log on repeat before coming here too. Oh, wow. Thank <laughs> you. I don't know what to do with all these… All Compliments? These, yeah, thank yeah. you. Let's do more. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone. This is producer Diane coming to you. They finally gave me a mic. But only for one real reason. Which is to tell you about our sponsor, Ana Luisa. That's spelled A-N-A -A space. L-U-I-S-A. Anna Luisa is a, a jewelry company that designs pieces with a more beautiful story from beginning to end, starting with recycled materials whenever possible, transparent business practices always, and small batches that are kind to the earth. They're carbon neutral. They have a 365-day warranty on their pieces. And not only that, they make limited batches of their pieces, which ensures the highest production standards while eliminating excessive waste. And getting into jewelry in general, I feel like I always have like the one ring that i really like wearing for like years until genuinely it breaks or i lose it i rarely find pieces that i really like so when i do find it it means a lot and i just use, wear them over and over and in order to wear them over and over the design has to be very simple you know kind of every day has to last a long time and thankfully that kind of basically sums up Anna Luisa jewelry once again, Anna Luisa is A-N-A -A space L-U-I-S-A if you want to look them up. And not only that, I'm really grateful that they have jewelry that start as low as 39 bucks. And not only that, you get to add your 10% discount from um, our code on top of that purchase. So it's even cheaper than 39 if you go with a piece of jewelry that is 39 And new jewelry collections are released every Friday. Well, to sum it all up, check out analuisa.com slash real. Go treat yourself and your loved ones and use our code real to get 10% off. I absolutely recommend them. They're a great brand. 
、uh, making beautiful, sustainable jewelry. So go check them out. Anna Luisa dot com slash real code real. No, I'm for real. Do it. <laughs> okay, now back to get real. Let's get real. All right. Were you able to make music at all, or were you just there purely as a trainee, just getting lessons and stuff? Um, I did both. I did make a lot of music. In fact, remember was made in YG, so we bought it out when I came out of the company. Oh, wow! But they didn't really want to release it there. Uh huh. So yeah. Oh wow! Which album was that? That、the、was my、one. very first single.、Uh-huh. <laughs> Wow! Thank you. Wow. No, I felt I, I messed with that one heavy. I was like, oh snap! And then I see all these rappers like Zen and the Zilla, C Jams are out there, and they're just like turning. I'm just like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That felt good.、Mm. Nowadays, it doesn't seem too out there for an Asian American pop star based in the states. Uh huh. What has it been like, however, trying to start a music career as Asians?、Mm. Great question.、Hmm. Mm, I feel like there's definitely an un- unseen、um, border that、uh, looks really, really hard to cross as an Asian or Asian American artist、um, trying to make it in the Western field. And I'm I'm not saying like you know obviously we have we have the BTS, we have the people that have already made it, but Um, there's like a certain pedigree that that you just it seems almost impossible to cross because at the end of the day it's still like Asian American. I don't know. I try not to think about that, and I'm just like whoever messes with it messes with it. Whoever doesn't doesn't. Because at the end of the day, when I'm on tour and I see the fans, more than half of them aren't Asians. That's kind of what something that blows my mind. So、mm-hmm. I'm just like, dang. Well, Katie, you were、um, in the states for a while, and I know. You speak English, and all almost all of your songs are in English. So, were you trying to target like American、uh, listeners at first, especially with like promotions in the states? Oh my goodness! I was trying to do what was more comfortable for me, which which was English.、Mm-hmm. But、um, maybe it was just trying to be borderless, maybe、mm. because if I do Korean music, it just limits the people to who only speak Korean,、mm-hmm. which isn't. As much as who speaks English, you know? right? So I think that's the, one of the biggest reasons that I went with English songs. But、um, yeah, I think it's really difficult, maybe for other races as well. But just being Asian in the states is there is a border that's、mm. very、mm. invisible but difficult、mm. to cross over. Yeah, who are some Asian artists that are doing okay in the American industry right now? Like Joji,、mm. Joji.、Mm. Does- Bruno well, Mars. Bruno Mars. Oh, oh, Bruno Mars. Yeah. My man, Bruno, killing it. <laughs> <laughs>、um, Anderson Pack. Like- oh yeah, yeah. He's yeah, actually yeah. half Korean.、Mm. Yeah. yeah. Audrey Nuna. I think she has a really big fan base too. She's、mm. super dope.、Mm. She she's dope dope. Yeah. There are no pop stars I mean, like Bruno、Asian、Mars is one, but he, I guess maybe compared to like very Eastern Asians.、Mm. We look a bit very different than the Western people,、mm-hmm. so I think there's more of like how th- that they're not used to seeing us kind of looking people. <laughs> right. So I think it's great that BTS is doing well, so that people、yeah. in the media are getting used to seeing us kind of people、mm-hmm. on TV and everything. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I feel like Blackpink and BTS are doing really well in the states,、mm. but I feel like as a solo artist, it's really hard. Katie might be the first one though. Let's、yes. go, let's go, Katie. Let's <laughs> let's make that breakthrough. Invisible walls is breaking down. <laughs> What do you guys want people to know you as or know you for? I feel like it goes back and forth a lot. Like some days I'm just like dope artist. Some days I'm like dope human being. Some days I'm like funny guy. Some days I'm like sexy guy. Some days I'm like cutie pie. <laughs> you know. <laughs> So hard. Well, I feel like for you, you're always inspiring other people.、Mm. So I think people look up to you a lot, and、mm. people go to you for positivity and when they're feeling down because you really,、um, yeah, you really have that talent of just being able to lift people up.、Mm. So、yeah. I like uplifting. 
It's fun. Mm -hmm. It puts me up there too with them. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, you dope. I'm your friend, so we're dope. Wow, that's a blessing. It is. It is. It's like you give one and you get one at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. How about you? Um, I when I saw this question, I immediately thought of just my music. Mm -hmm. But yeah, with my music, what I really wanted to do in the, from the beginning was that it was like outcast people could feel like they're included mm. because I felt like I was one, you know, growing up in the States and all that. So I just wanted like those unseen people, not those major people, but like those minor minorities to kind of feel like they have a shoulder to lean on kind of. Mm. <laughs> oh my goodness. Sorry, no, it's just yeah. a hit. Oh, mm. thank you. Mm. But something like that. I was curious about you though. Me? Mm. I don't know, man. I'm lost. Because mm. I'm like doing so many things right now. But there's not one thing that I'm like devoting myself to. Because mm. I do like radio. I do YouTube. Um, I mean, Instagram isn't like a job or anything. But I mean, it can be because, mm. you know, there are a lot of… Um, sponsorships that come in through Instagram but um, I feel like and and I'm also I'm a part of Ladies Code but I don't know I don't know what I would like do you know what I see when I see you what I like I I like that whatever field you're in Mm. it seems a very it seems like it's a very authentic Ashley like it's different Mm -hmm. but it's still authentic like I, I, I watched her do radio and her emceeing thing and I was just like dang like she killing the MC game. Mm-hmm. Like you're actually really good at MCing and like mediating and moderating. I'm just like, oh shoot, dang, she's good. Yeah, well, she's thank good. You. Maybe you're talented in those areas where you could bring out like good in other people. You're like the bringer, bringer, <laughs> bringer outer <laughs> bringer of the gooder. Yeah. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. Mm. And all those things that you do, it's like. Even if it's like YouTube, Instagram, and other radio stuff, it's all part of socializing. Mm-hmm. So I'm super bad at socializing, mm-hmm. but maybe you're talented in those fields that you could meet a lot of people and have your impact on them. Mm, I think it's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you made me cry. <laughs> Stop. Stop. <laughs> All right, guys. We have some people on Reddit and Discord. Mm. And let's see if we can offer them any insight. User anonymous account. Mm. First things first. Me and my girlfriend have been together for two years now. We're from two very different countries and cultures. But we managed to get along. She is an undergrad to become a teacher next year. And is really looking forward to it. She loves Instagram. She spends quite a lot of time watching stories of her favorite influencers. Always buys what they buy. Makeup clothes, smartphone cases, etc. Always wears what they consider as trendy. Me, on the other hand, I barely use social media. I once every half a year post a picture I like. More frequently, however, she starts talking about how she would love to be an influencer on Instagram. Blogging daily and traveling around the world. Getting sponsorships about her favorite products. Becoming famous and being able to generally afford more for our children. When we have them. Whenever she mentions something like this, I don't know how I should feel. I'm a down-to-earth man. I live a rather quiet and comfy lifestyle and I simply can't imagine being a part of the Instagram life that she imagines. I said, on the other hand, I would be happy if she could really achieve what she was dreaming about. But on the other hand, I said I'm scared of how our life would change as it is. She replied that I don't have to participate in all that, but I replied that we share our lives and that we are part of another, especially when we should, when we would do this as, at home. I want to share my life with her, We were talking about having kids together. If I wouldn't participate in her job, such as flying around the whole globe, I imagine barely seeing her as she describes it. How would that work with kids? Of course, this was just a vision of hers. It's not reality right now. She has other plans, but she's still mad that I don't like… I don't really share her dreams. Uh, I am just writing down my feelings and want to seek out help on how we could finally get this topic out of the way. Do you travel a lot? I mean, COVID. 
Ah, oh, okay. True um, that. And it's really hard to get to the status where you're invited to like different countries for events and mm. you fly around the world. Um, I know a lot of people want to be influencers these days because mm. it looks very easy. But oh my God, I see some like hardcore influencers around me and no. it is not easy. And um, especially they, they need to have like a photographer who will always take pictures for them. And most of the time it's their boyfriends or yeah. their husbands, right? So the Instagram boyfriend or Instagram husband who's mm. always taking pictures for them. Um, I know they fight a lot uh. because, you know, they're like, oh, I just want to enjoy this time. But they're like, okay, I need to film this. I need to document this, mm. you know? And unless you are really understanding of that or unless you're a photographer, mm. I feel like it's really hard because they're not on the same page right now. And he is so different and she's so different. So they need to come to an agreement or something because i don't know what's up get real listeners it's producer diane and i wanted to say to listen and subscribe to season two of asian enough and la times podcast having the conversations we need when we need them the most join returning host jen yamato and fellow times reporters johanna buya tracy brown and suhana hussein as they explore the asian american experience now on asian enough you'll get to hear interviews with a range of voices including actor sandra oh and lucy Liu, nalas minjin lee drag performer Juju B and you know I hopped on that episode as soon as it was released this past Tuesday um it yeah I was really excited and I listened to it right away on my drive actually from uh San Francisco to LA and thank goodness for that I love the company um but yeah so each per guest will share the joys the complications and everything else that comes along with being Asian American I have been watching Drag Race since I want to say college, like 23rd, no, 2014. So it was crazy to hear so much of her background and, you know, her family's, uh, I guess, like journey together as being immigrants from Laos. And I feel like that's a really underrepresented part of Asia in general, especially in like Western media, because you see mostly like East Asians, like Korean, Japanese, Chinese. So it was great to hear someone from that perspective, being Laotian American specifically. So yeah, season two of Asian Enough explores topics like the pandemic's impact on the community, the need for allyship, the ongoing fight for inclusion in media, and so much more asian enough season two is now available to stream on latimes.com or listen and subscribe on apple spotify or wherever you get podcasts you're listening to one right now so surely you you've got this down congratulations you're much smarter than me okay now back to the show all right katie say you had a man (laughs) he's trying to be famous famous like Mm. like um do you know who logan paul jake paul is they're trying to be like blogger famous, vlog famous, Instagram famous, travel the world type famous. But um, I think I'm the man here. Mm-hmm. But mm. you know, she's just thinking. She's just mad. But mm-hmm. it never happened. Yet. Yeah, she's not an influencer yet. And it's really difficult to become an influencer and travel mm. around the world. Mm. So I think, like as of now, maybe he could kind of say that. You know, we're going to share our lives together. Why don't we kind of meet in the middle? Mm. Not just support your way and I just follow. Yeah. So maybe just, I think talking it out is the best way. But, you know, just since she's mad right now and he's worried about that, Mm. maybe get that over and then see if she makes it as an Mm. influencer after. Yeah. I feel like if if you only if you're a couple and you only support one person's mm. dreams or job, I feel like the other person is going to end up maybe resenting that person because yeah. they didn't get to live the life they wanted and they were all in for the other person. Yeah. So I feel like they do have to compromise and meet in the middle if they really love each other. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, also this is something that he's scared that might happen. Mm. Um kind of just reading how she's you know, talking about it and how she's like, oh man, but she does spend quite a lot of time watching stories of her favorite influencers, always buying what they buy, like makeup, mm. clothes, and smartphone cases. So yeah, I guess kind of. That's kind of. Could be a problem for him. Mm. How much money does she spend though? But must be significant if he's posting this on Reddit, right? Mm. You need to have that talk. Yeah, try to like nonchalantly bring it up. But you know how I'm kind of active on social media on Instagram, right? And I take 
quite a lot of pictures, you know, oh not, my not of myself, yes. but, you know, wherever I go somewhere. Yes. And I, w- I think even though I'm like that, I'd be so annoyed if my partner was like that, <laughs> which is, you know. That's not fair. <laughs> know. But so I don't think I could date someone who's maybe like me or worse than me because I can't put up with that. <laughs> So I'm she like, looks in the mirror in the morning. I'll never date you. <laughs> not you. Not yeah, in this I'll lifetime. Never date you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a stressful. Think about it. Everywhere you go, you're like, oh my god, can you take a picture? Mm. Like, can you get a picture for me? And they spend hours like choosing the photos. Or even when you're having a conversation, they're like oh, watching other people's Insta Pause. stories or whatever. You spend hours. Oh, I don't do that. I'm oh, saying okay. if they did that, let's oh. say you know we take it far and they, that's what they do. I don't think I could do that. Yeah, being too indulged in the digital world can kind of have a huge effect on your reality. So mm. be chill with that sometimes, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't really watch other people's Insta stories a lot. Oh, yeah? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, that was some insight for you. Let's see. We have user anonymous again. My boyfriend and I have been together for about four months now. He had a rough childhood and is pretty insecure about what others think about him. But is also a really popular slash social guy at our university. Hmm. His appearance and popularity matter to him a lot. To the point where I've, I've been trying to help him realize he shouldn't look to other people to validate himself. He knows he's insecure and has, slowly try, is, has been tr- slowly trying to work on it. But yesterday he dropped… A bombshell on me that I should start caring about what other people think because he is guilty by association to my actions. What? (laughs) I was fine with helping him deal with his insecurities. But now he's basically asking me to start caring about what other people think. And to be careful with what I do or say because he doesn't want people to talk about him, us, me behind our backs. No idea what to do. I'm a pretty loud person and I don't really care about what other people think of me. So I don't care if people talk about me behind my back. But he says he feels associated with my actions. He doesn't want people to talk about me or him. I need your advice on what to do next. Is this a deal breaker? Are we incompatible? So he cares more about what other people think than what he thinks of her. Or what he wants this… How much he cares about her. Right? He cares Mm. more about what other people think. So he's trying to not only brand himself… Brand his girlfriend and himself together. Heck no, yeah. <laughs> no. It doesn't oh make sense that he's trying to be nice and all that to other people, but not his girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. That should be the closest person that you should be nice to. Yeah. Right? Oh my god, what would you say? What would you think? Or what would you do if someone said, I mean, your boyfriend or your girlfriend said, I need you to start acting better. Mm. Like, you know, you're embarrassing You're embarrassing me. I don't want to be associated by you or your actions. Mm. What would you do? I mean, if my girlfriend came to me and said that, I'd be like, what about me is embarrassing? Mm. What do you think? Find That's sad, huh? <laughs> 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 what about me do you not like that I do? Like, what behavioral? Like, what do you want me to fix? I'll ask her first. And if it's like too out there, like, I don't like the tone of your voice. Oh. <laughs> then bye. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you. <laughs> no, thank you. Nah, yeah. So, I mean, I would see if there's a middle ground for this first and foremost. Because, I mean, I, I, at the end of the day, I don't think you should change who you are mm-hmm. because of how… Because of how your boyfriend worries that other people perceive you. It's not, it's not, it's not even like how you feel like people will perceive you. It's like your boyfriend. That's mm-hmm. kind of… I don't think that's… I don't think that's fair. I will break up with him. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but I kind of feel for the guy as well. Because he says mm. he had a rough childhood. So he could be like a victim of some kind of trauma. And True. that's the result of him being insecure. So maybe True. talk to like a… But there, but since he knows that he's being insecure, mm. maybe that could help him. And if it doesn't, then maybe it's a deal breaker. Mm. Yeah. I mean, she's been trying to help him, you know. Mm. And yeah. Yeah. So what should she do? Just ask him to go to, ask him to see a therapist? If she's willing to wait and if she's patient, but if she's not, I just break up. Yeah. But ask first, though. What about <laughs> me do you not like? What do you, what is embarrassing about me? Mm. Is it the fact that I'm loud? 
you know how she mentioned that he had a rough childhood yeah. and um, he's pretty insecure maybe because of that maybe he didn't receive a lot of love growing up so he is always craving uh, for other people's attention and love I know a lot of people stay in their relationship because they feel bad mm. and they feel like they can fix the person yeah. kind of like you know the mother mm, Teresa you know so yeah. um, but then I don't think that's healthy in the end I know you want to help that person and help to fix that person but that's not your job like mm. you guys are in the relationship together you shouldn't be like doing having shouldn't to do that shouldn't be one side giving yeah. Yeah. one side just receiving yeah 50-50 come on <laughs> Now we're going into the next section. We're going into compliment time again. <laughs> <laughs> Give me more, guys. <laughs> Alright, guys. That wrap up today's show. Um, that was a very heartfelt show, I feel like. <laughs> Katie, do you have any upcoming projects? Or any um, stuff that you want to shout out? Get the fans excited for, maybe? No. <laughs> Not that I know of. Yeah. <laughs> As of now, I don't know. So. Well, no. for all the fans that are first hearing about Katie, if you don't know, now you know. Go check out her music. Oh, Super please. dope. Thanks. If you haven't yet, you're doing no justice to your ears. So do it now. Oh yeah, shout out all your SNS and um, all your. Um, hmm. my Instagram is K A T I E E S H. Katie ish. Yeah. Katie ish. Yeah, that's the main thing that I do. So you'll just find me there. Okay. Yeah, go, go ahead and her. give her a follow. And that wraps up today's episode. If you guys want to stay updated on the show, IG and Twitter at The Dive Studios. Full episodes on youtube.com slash dive pods. Once again, follow and review this podcast. And thank you so much, Katie, for joining us. And thank, thank you, everyone, you. for listening. Bye. Woo -woo. Bye. Compliment each other more. <laughs> do it. Hey, did you like this video? If so, click the subscribe button. And make sure to turn on your notifications so you don't miss a single video. And listen to the entire audio episode on Spotify or Apple Podcasts.